For the following exercises, consider the graph shown. If the complete graph of the function is shown, estimate the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. So just remember the terms increasing and decreasing, what they mean. I mean, you already probably know what they mean, but it's easier to think about it as increasing kind of means where you're going to start low with something and end high with that same something like a bank account or something, right? If you start with a low balance, you end with a high balance in your bank account, you know your bank account increased, right? Similarly with decreasing, if you start high though and end low, you obviously know that whatever quantity you're talking about has decreased, okay? Now, in order to then identify increasing and decreasing intervals on this particular graph, the first important step over here, as I've detailed on the left-hand side, is going to be to find any maxima or minima. Basically, anything that you can, any areas that will be maximums or minimums, all right? And basically, we're looking at tops and bottoms of the hills, okay? I notice in this problem, we actually have, you know, we can, we can actually... Think about it as if we had a few different types of maximums and minimums, right? You might say that this point represents a minimum, okay? You might say right here, you might say that this point right over here represents a maximum, right? That this is the absolute lowest point that the graph reaches. How did I know that? Well, if you notice here, there's a dot, right? There is no arrow head. And what that means is that the graph is truncated. Ooh, that's a word, huh? The graph is truncated means it stops right over here. Actually, I challenge you to use that word today. Use truncated today in some context, right? Go to your professor and say, my apologies, professor, but I had to truncate my studying time because I had to watch Netflix, right? Something like that will work. Now, if we truncate the graph here and here, we realize that these are, or this, I should say, is the absolute lowest point that the graph reaches, and I can call this the absolute minimum. Now that doesn't answer this question yet, uh, but I'm just kind of going through some of the terminology. And this point over here represents the absolute maximum, okay? Now within this graph, right, we have some other special areas. It looks like the graph reaches a, a high point right here, right? Another high point, but you might say it's not the highest. Well, I know, you're, you're right, it's not the highest, but it is a local high point, right? Meaning that in this local area, we have a high point right there, right? And this would be then called something uh, known as the local max, okay? And then we have another point over here that this point will represent, and same in similar fashion, will represent the local, local min, right? Or local minimum. Now, what I do is once I identify the maximums and minimums, or maxima and minima, I am then going to draw vertical lines. All right. Now, technically, I would guess, according to that rule, I would draw four vertical lines. Okay. That's not really vertical at all. Here's another vertical line. And then I would draw these two as well. Okay. Now, really, two of these you don't have to draw. All right. Um, reason being is because the first one and the last one here, there is no graph to the left-hand side, right? I mean, the graph is truncated at that point. And therefore, this doesn't really help us break uh, these two lines, don't help break these uh, this graph up into any meaningful interval. So what we can do just to make our life a little easier is to just, we can erase them or we can just delete them however you, you know, however you'd like to look at that. Uh, let me see if I can just delete them quickly. All right. This one I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Yeah, there we go. All right. So... We really have three important regions, one to the left of the first vertical line over here, the second part in the middle, and the third part to the right of the second vertical line. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this part in red, and we'll look at this interval first. Okay, so we have to now label whether this interval here is increasing or decreasing. So you read the graph from left to, to right. So we're gonna start at this point, that's the leftmost point of that interval, and then this is the rightmost point of that interval. And notice, we started low and we ended high, therefore that sounds like it's increasing to me, right? So I'm gonna write down the one increasing interval now, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the bracket here to describe this particular x value. The reason why is because the graph does not continue all the way out, and I know that this point is absolute, uh, absolutely, excuse me, absolutely part of the increasing interval. 
All right. Now it looks like to me that this point isn't exactly negative eight, but I'm just going to write it as negative eight. It looks like a little less, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know why it's a little off, but I mean, you could write negative, you know, 7.5. I don't know. It'd be really hard to come up with the exact value. And now we realize that this graph also, it looks like it's going to have an X value here, right? The, the interval here for that point is going to have an X value of about negative three three or so, right? So it goes to negative three. Now I'm not going to include that point because I realize that this point is going to be part of this increasing portion and then also part of this, spoiler alert, decreasing portion. All right, so I can't really include that in both. It, it wouldn't be logically correct to do so. So now what I'm going to do is just highlight the second interval and I start on the left, I go to my right and I realize we're starting high, ending low. So this is a decreasing interval now. And again, not including, it goes from negative three and it's gonna go all the way out to the X value of about, and my line's probably slightly off. It looks like it's gonna be about two and a half. All right, 2.5, 2.5. Last but not least, my third interval over here. I'm gonna start on the leftmost handed side of that interval. Here's the rightmost side, starting low, ending high. It's gonna be increasing. So I'm gonna add a union to the increasing notation. All right, so we're also going to include then from 2.5, that's the X value of this point, all the way on over to then, it seems that the graph will stop at about 6.5 maybe, uh, excuse me, at about seven. Right, it looks like it might be about halfway. Uh, and I'm going to include that point because the graph stops at that location. All right, so those would be the answers. So now taking a look at the second question, it says, if the complete graph is shown, estimate the absolute maximum and absolute minimum. So we basically already did that, right? I already spoke about that. So that's the benefit. I mean, we answered the second question already. Here's the absolute minimum. Here's the absolute maximum. And let me just label then the max point. Uh, it appears that the graph goes, the X value there is about seven, and it appears that it's gonna go out to about 150, right? So the maximum, the absolute max point is at about seven comma, uh, 150. Don't confuse this notation now with the notation we used up here in terms of interval notation. This is X comma Y notation, right? It's just notation for a point. And the minimum then will have the point, it looks like it's going to be about, the X value is about negative eight. And the Y value looks like it's gonna come down here until about, I don't know, negative 225 or so. So put a little comma, negative 225. And that would be the maximum minimum points. Now, if they wanted to know, you know, it doesn't say the point necessarily. It says what's the absolute max and absolute min. So if we, you know, if they don't want to, if they're not asking for the point specifically, they might want the point. That's kind of a little ambiguous. Or they might just want the Y value, right? Because that's basically the output of the graph. The Y value is the output. So, you know, if you, the absolute maximum, in terms of number would be 150. The absolute min would be negative 225. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this video helped. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.